The physiological form of our genome, as most people know it and think about it, is our, our DNA, our genetic blueprint, what we inherit from mother and from father. And I think what um, my lab has contributed to perhaps most is an understanding that this is not the physiologically relevant form of our genome. In fact, it's highly packaged, highly constrained, with a protein complex that literally packages our DNA much like a slinky toy. This is term, been now termed epigenetics. It's some layer of genetic regulation that operates outside of the DNA, maybe, maybe a different concept from what we inherited from mom and dad. And because chromatin in this complex is so fundamental, it, it's conserved from yeast to flies to humans, it's turning out that this is actually um, very important in much of human biology, much of human health. Because these, some of these enzymatic activities are druggable, they've become popular new uh, targets for therapeutic uh, designs. And in some cases, these have been moved very rapidly in clinical trials and actually have proven very effective as anti-cancer anti reagents in people. We are all composed of cells, and one of the big questions is how do cells uh, divide? And the, one of the most important things when a cell divides is the chromosomes are copied, and the two copies of the chromosomes have to be moved to opposite sides of the cell uh, before the cell divides. And uh, what our breakthrough discovery was is, is to discover the, 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 that, that something holds the two copies together and that when the two copies are broken apart, we discovered the enzyme that actually breaks those two copies apart. So in a sense, we, in some sense, discovered the, the, the trigger for the cell division uh, process. Cell division is the basis of all life. Um, uh, most diseases are caused by, many diseases are caused by microorganisms that divide. Cancer is caused by the um, cell, too much cell division in our bodies. Um, so, by understanding the chemistry of chromosome segregation, we may uh, shed insight into what goes wrong in cancer cells. Uh, trisomy 21 or Down syndrome, which is where the most common genetic disease of all, which is due to mistakes in this chromosome segregation process in, uh, in the oocytes of women, particularly as they, as they get older. Many years ago, it began to dawn on us, so what we, we might call a very slow motion breakthrough, uh, that it was the RNA component and not the protein component of the ribosome that was the basis of its function. And this was completely in contradiction to the uh, uh, common wisdom of the time. The implications of these findings are, first of all, that we're now able to develop new antibiotics. Secondly, we uh, understand the molecular basis of one of the most important processes in all living cells, which is how you translate the language of RNA and DNA into protein, and make all of the proteins that living things required for, require for life. Uh, finally, uh, uh, an unexpected development, but one that has uh, great uh, even philosophical interest is where uh, we came from so that the uh, fact that the basis of the action of ribosomes is based on RNA and not protein uh, is a sort of living fossil that provides evidence for the existence of an RNA world that pre-existed before our life form uh, and from which we may well have uh, evolved.
I'm an X-ray crystallographer and I've been determining the atomic structures of macromolecular assemblies with the goal of understanding how these macromolecules achieve their biological function. Our structural studies of the large ribosomal subunit complex with antibiotics is providing information that is enabling structure-based drug design to create new compounds that are effective against all the resistant bacterial strains against which they have been tested. Our basic research studies may be effective in creating new compounds that will be effective against the MRSA uh, superbug strains that you've heard about in the newspapers recently that have been killing tens of thousands of patients in U.S. hospitals each year. The work we've been fortunate enough to be involved in is the identification of the fact that there's an alteration in a gene called HER2 that occurs in about 20 to 25 percent of human breast cancer. That means about 200 to 250,000 women a year who have this alteration worldwide. And that when it occurs, it's associated with a particularly aggressive form of the disease. These women have a quicker time to a relapse and unfortunately a shorter survival. The next part of the work was to find out why that was the case and we were able to determine that it was playing a role in causing that outcome which made it a logical target. And the final part of the work was then to be involved in designing some of the clinical trials starting from phase one all the way through to the final trials for registration that showed that if we target that alteration we could dramatically change the outcome for those women. The clinical trials themselves involved testing of initially the drug Herceptin, which is an antibody directed against the HER2 receptor, and ultimately the drug Lapatinib, which is also directed against the receptor but at a different part. Both of these drugs appear to be particularly effective. Herceptin has been proven and registered, and Lapatinib is now going through that process.